Hey, how you doing? Hey, good. My name is Josh. I'm just with a local Baptist church, Valiant Baptist Church. Just want to invite you to church. Okay. You go to church anywhere? Uh, yeah, I go to uh, Faith Community Church down the street. Faith Community Church. Okay. Well, you know, more important than what church you go to, I ask everybody the same question, you know. God forbid, if you were to die today, do you know for sure if you'd go to heaven? I, th I mean, I think I have a pretty good chance, you know. I think I, I think I got a good chance. I think you got a good chance? Okay, well, so what are you putting your trust in to get you to heaven, then? Just uh, being a good person and, you know, just trying to obey the commandments. Okay, be a good person, obey the commandments. Okay, well, the Bible actually says something just a little bit different. You mind if I take just five minutes or so to show you what the Bible says? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay, cool. So the first thing I always show people is right here in uh, Romans chapter 3. So one thing we got to understand first is the Bible says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Right? So that's saying that we've all sinned, right? And how would you define sin in your own words? Just uh, doing things we're not supposed to do. Yeah, right? Yeah, the Bible specifically says that sin is the transgression of the law. Mm -hmm. You know, so when we break God's commandments, that's sin. And, you know, the... The commandments that people are most familiar with would be the Ten Commandments, right? You ever heard of those? Yeah. Yeah, right. And one of the Ten Commandments says, Thou shalt not bear false witness, or don't lie. You know, have you ever told a lie before? Right. Yeah, of course. Yeah, right. Who hasn't told lies? Right. Right? We've all told lies. And that fits right with this verse when it says that we've all sinned, right? And the Bible says that what we earn for our sin is death. Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death. Now, if you've ever worked a job before, you, you've probably heard of wages, right? Wages are what you earn for your work or for what you do. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says that what we earn for our sin is death. So according to the Bible, the reason why we're going to die one day is because of our sin. Mm -hmm. But there's not only one death, you know, it's not just the physical death, right? And that's nothing new to anybody. We all know we're going to physically die. But the Bible also makes mention of a second death. Have you ever heard of the second death before? I haven't. You haven't? Okay, well, let me. you'll know what it is once I show you. The Bible says right here in Revelation 20, 14, it says, And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. So it says the second death is the lake of fire. And what would we more normally call that place? Like hell. Hell, right, yeah. exactly. So the Bible says that the second death is the lake of fire. And right here it even says that hell is cast into the lake of fire, but they're essentially the same place. Mm -hmm. And the Bible very clearly describes hell as being, you know, a place of fire and brimstone. Jesus Christ says that it's an everlasting fire, and uh, it's a literal place that we go. And the Bible says right here who's going to be there. It says, but the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Right, so that's a list of all of all these different kinds of people and the sins that they commit that they deserve to go to hell. Right, right at the top it says murderers. Now, how many people do you have to kill to be a murderer? Just one. Just one person, right? So, how many lies do you have to tell to be a liar? Just one. Yeah, right, and right there it says all liars. So, according to this verse, murderers and liars deserve to go where? To hell. To hell, right? Now, you you and I may not be murderers, but we both admitted that we're liars. So, according to this verse, where do we deserve to go? To hell. To hell, right? Now, do you think hell is a temporary place, or how long do you think it lasts? Probably forever, right? Yeah, it's forever, right? You either go to heaven forever, or you go to hell forever. There's no in-between. There's no purgatory. Mm -hmm. Once you go to one or the other, that's it. And the Bible makes it very clear that, you know, when the devil, he's going to go to hell. The Bible says that hell was created for the devil and his angels. It says right here, And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, mm -hmm. where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. So just like you said, it's forever and ever, and once you go there, there's no hope. But do you think that God wants you to go to hell? No. No, no right? The Bible says that God is just and holy and good. And He says that the soul that sins, it shall die. He, In order to be good, He has to punish sin. And His punishment for sin is eternity in hell. And either we go to hell for all of our sins, and pay for them for all eternity, or somebody else goes to hell for our sins who has never sinned at all, right? Because I can't go to hell for your sins because I have my own, and you can't go for mine. And let me ask you this, would you go to hell for me even if you could? No. No, right? I mean, that's, but the good news is, is that none of us has to go to hell. Mm -hmm. The Bible says right here in Romans chapter 5, verse 8, 
you know, this is, this talks about what God did for us so we wouldn't have to go to hell. It says, but God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us, right? So the Bible makes it very clear that God made a way for us to be saved by becoming a man, right? 1 Timothy 3.16 says, And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifested in the flesh, right? So God, the one true God, became a man, born of the Virgin Mary, right? It says in Matthew chapter 1, that Jesus Christ was born of the Virgin Mary, just like the Old Testament prophesied. It says right here in Matthew 1.23, it says, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and she shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. And then down here it says in verse 25, talking about the Joseph, his earthly father, and he called his name Jesus. So Jesus was born of the Virgin Mary. He was God manifested in the flesh. And the Bible says that he lived a life just like you and me, except that he was, uh, you know, he was tempted in all points like as we are, and yet without sin. So the Bible makes it very clear. And I'll even show you that where it says in uh, Hebrews chapter 4. Let's see. Hebrews chapter 4. You know, because as Christians, we should base everything we believe on the Bible, right? That makes sense. Hebrews chapter 4. Give it to you in context so you don't think I'm just pulling out of thin air. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 4, 15, For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. So Jesus was tempted in the same way that we are, in every way, you know, but he was without sin. Now, then Jesus went to the cross, right? The Bible says that he willingly laid his life down. He says that, I lay my life down and no man taketh it from me. Mm -hmm. You know, so he willingly died on the cross being innocent, right? So did he deserve to go there? No. No, right? So he died on the cross and the Bible says that he took the blame for all of our sins. It says in uh, 1 Peter 1.24... I apologize, 2.24, it says, Who his own self bear our sins and his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. And in another place it says, He who knew no sin became sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God. Mm -hmm. So Jesus took the blame for all of the, all, the whole world's sins, all my sins, all yours, everybody's. And then when he died, they buried his body in the tomb, but where do you think his soul went when he was dead? He went up back, back up to heaven, right? Back up to heaven, right? Yeah, that's what most people think, right? That's what I used to think. But the Bible makes it very clear that Jesus Christ was taking our punishment. We, only, we don't just deserve the physical death. We also deserve to go to hell. And the Bible makes it very clear that Jesus Christ went to hell. I'll show you in Acts chapter 2. Acts 2.31, it says, talking about King David in the Old Testament, it says, He seen this before spake of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell, neither his flesh did see corruption. This Jesus hath God raised up, whereof we all are witnesses. Right. So Jesus Christ's soul was not left in hell. Mm -hmm. and in order for it to not be left there, he had to have been there, obviously. Right. right. And, you know, some people believe that he just went to hell and he was preaching to the spirits that were there. But, you know, if you think about the Old Testament sacrificial lamb, Right? They cut up the lamb and then they did what? They burnt it on the altar. Mm -hmm. And that was a picture of Jesus. Jesus, when he went to hell for three days and three nights, he was burning in hell, mm -hmm. paying for all of our sins. Mm -hmm. But he didn't stay there forever. What happened after three days and three nights? He rose again. He rose again, right? Proving that he was God and he had power over death and hell. Mm -hmm. Now, do you think that Jesus died for everybody or just certain people? Everyone. Everyone, yeah, right? The Bible says very clearly in 1 John chapter 2, talking about Jesus Christ in verse 2 it says and he is the propitiation for our sins and not for ours only but also for the sins of the whole world so the Bible makes it very clear he didn't just die for Christians he died for everybody mm -hmm. you know whether you're rich or poor whether you're white or black whether you're from America or Canada or any other nation Jesus died for you mm -hmm. 
But just because he died for everybody, does that mean that everybody's going to heaven? Yeah. No, right? It's not automatic. There's something that you have to do to benefit from his death, burial, and resurrection. And think about this. If God loves you, do you think he wants you to know how to go to heaven? Yeah. Yeah, and if you asked him how to be saved, do you think that he would tell you? Yeah. Yeah, right? He loves you. He didn't go to all that effort just to leave you in the dark. And if you asked him the question, what must I do to be saved? This is what he would tell you. This is the only time in the Bible this question is asked. It says in verse 30 of Acts chapter 16, And brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. Does that say you got to come to my church to be saved? Does it say you have to keep the commandments to be saved? No. no, it doesn't say you have to be baptized. It doesn't say you have to repent of all your sins. It doesn't say any of that. It just says believe. Mm -hmm. And what does it mean to believe in someone? To trust in them? Yeah, exactly. To trust in them, right? If you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ or if you trust or believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, it means you trust in Him and what He did to save mm -hmm. you, not your own good works. Okay. And just so you don't think I'm pulling one verse out of context, this is all over the... The Bible. I mean, there's so many scriptures that back this up, but I'll just show you the most famous verse in the whole Bible and then one other verse. The Bible says right here, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And then right here, John 3.36, it says, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. Right? Because, you know, the Bible says that salvation is easy. It's not hard. I mean, think about it. If God loves you, do you think He wants salvation to be easy or hard? Easy. Easy, right? The Bible says that salvation is a gift. Right? Romans chapter 6, verse 23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now, uh, again, my name was Josh. What would you say your name was? Uh, Russell. Russell. If I brought you a gift today, Russell, who paid for it most likely? You did. I did, right? Let's say I brought you this gift and I said, Mr. Russell, I want to give you this gift, but I want $5 in return. Is that really a gift? No. No, right? Because a gift by definition is what? Uh, for free. It's free, right? Yeah. You don't have to pay for it. Right. Let's say I give it to you for free up front, and then I come back next week and say, hey, Mr. Russell, I don't like the way you're living your life. You're doing all this stuff that I think is wrong, and I take the gift back. Was that really a gift? No. No, right? Because a gift, once I give it to you, who does it belong to? Me. You, right? It's your property, and how long is it yours? It's mine forever. Forever, right? Yeah, I mean, and the Bible says the gift of God is eternal life, mm -hmm. right? So how many times do you have to receive a gift that lasts forever? Just one time. Just one yeah. time, exactly. So yeah. if I receive the gift of eternal life today by believing on the Lord Jesus Christ, the Bible says I have eternal life right now. Mm -hmm. So do I have eternal life tomorrow? Yeah. What about next week? Yes. What about 50 years from now? Yes. Yeah, right? I always have eternal life, yeah. right? The Bible makes it very clear that when I am saved, I receive the Holy Spirit of promise, and I am sealed with that Holy Spirit until the day of redemption. Mm -hmm. When do you think the day of redemption is? I don't know. You don't know? Well, it's, it's when Jesus comes back and, and calls up the saved to be with Him, and we receive our new bodies. He saves the body, right? And so... The Bible makes it very clear, if I receive the, you know, the gift of eternal life, there's nothing I can do to lose it, right? Let me explain it like this. If I receive the gift of eternal life today, let's say next week I get drunk and get in a car accident and kill someone. Let's say I lose my eternal life and go to hell when I die. Was it really a gift if it was taken away from me? No. Was it really eternal if it ended? No. No, right? The Bible makes it very clear that it's, it's an eternal gift. And so if it's an eternal gift, that means there's nothing I can do to lose it. And some may wonder, well, how is that possible? It's possible because the moment you put your faith in Jesus, He forgives you of all of your sins. You know, doesn't that, you know, that make sense? If He yeah, forgives you of all of your sins, let me show you a verse to back that up, right? <clears throat> Romans chapter 4, we'll just, uh, we'll read right here. It says, but to, but to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Even as David also describeth the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputeth righteousness without works, saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. So it says right there, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Does that sound like some of their sins are covered or all of them? 
All of them. All of them, right? Yeah. It's not just the past ones. It's all of their sins, right? right? So if you receive eternal life today, even the sins you haven't even committed yet have already been forgiven. And then another way the Bible describes salvation is it, you become the child of God. Have you ever heard of being born again? Yeah. Yeah, right. The Bible says you must be born again. And the Bible makes it very clear it's how you're born into God's family is through faith in Christ Jesus. So let's go over here. John chapter 1 says, But as many as received him, verse 12, But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. And the whole chapter of John 1 is talking about Jesus Christ and how he's God. So it says that you become the son of God by believing in the name of Jesus. Right? Do you have any children? Yes, sir. Right. And so when did your children become members of your family? They were born. When they were born, right? And that was nothing that they had to do. And, and the same thing with joining God's family, it's very easy. It's just by putting our faith in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Now, do you have rules for your children? Yes, sir. Right. You have rules for them. And if they disobey them, what do you do? I spank them. You spank them, right? Yeah. You punish your children, right? Yeah. It's the same thing with God. But is there anything that your child can do to stop being your child? No. No, right? Once they're your child, how long are they your child for? Always my child. Right. Even if, you know, God forbid, well, we all know, right? Parents die before their children, usually. Mm -hmm. And if you die before them, you'd still be their father. Right. Your relationship, that relationship is forever. Right. And it's the same thing with God. Once we become his child, we're always his child. Yes, he does have rules for us. And I'm going to show you in a second that the Bible says that he punishes his children if we disobey him. But once we're his child, we're always his child. Let me show you. Uh, we're in Hebrews chapter 12. It says that God will punish us if we disobey him. But like we just established, I mean, once you're someone's child, you're always their child. Mm -hmm. Hebrews chapter 12 says, For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the Father chasteneth not? But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. So the Bible makes it very clear. If you're the child of God and you sin, he will punish you. But it also makes it very clear. My favorite verse in the whole Bible is John chapter 10. Right here, John chapter 10. It says in verse 27, Jesus says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. So look right there. I always like to point out to people, it says, I and my Father are one. If Jesus is the Son of God, who is His Father? God. God, right? So right here, Jesus is saying, I and my Father are one. He's saying He's one with the Father. Why? Because God was manifested in the flesh. The one true God was manifested in the flesh. Right. And so Jesus, God in the flesh, says right here, I give unto them eternal life. He doesn't sell it to us. He doesn't reward it to us for our good works. He just gives it to us. Mm -hmm. And then he says that we'll never perish. Is he saying that we won't physically die? No. No, he's referring to that second death, right? Because if you as a Christian die, you go to heaven. That's a good thing. And then he says right here, I mean, just look at the word never. He says you'll never perish. He doesn't say they'll never perish as long as they don't do you know, any bad things. No, he just says, never perish. Then he says, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Then he says, my father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. So I really love this illustration. You know, it's Jesus is saying that we're in his hand and he is God, mm -hmm. right? Who's stronger than God? No one. No one, right? So he's saying that nobody can pluck you out of his hand. And guess what? Are you stronger than God? No. No, so you can't even get yourself out of his hand. Right. It's kind of like with a little child. I'm sure you've had this experience before, right? Where you're holding maybe your two-year-old's hand in the parking lot because you don't want them to get hit by a car. You know, you're holding on to their hand, but do they want you to hold on to their hand? No. no, usually they're fighting to get away, right? But you're way stronger than them. So even if they want to get away from you, they can't get away right. from you. So the Bible makes it very clear that even if you didn't want to be in God's hand, which is obviously you know bizarre to think about, even if you wanted to get out of his hand and not be his child anymore, he's promising you that he's never going to let you go. And another place that he says, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. So it makes it very clear over and over again, it's eternal life. He's never, you're never
never going to perish. He's never going to let you go. Mm -hmm. And if I had the time of day, I could show you many verses where it says over and over again that once you're saved, you're always saved, and you're saved by believing in Jesus Christ. It's very easy. Does that make sense? It's good news. And so the Bible, you know, just to review it all, right? The Bible says that we're all sinners. Do you believe that you're a sinner? Right, absolutely. And the Bible says that all liars deserve to go to hell. Do you believe the Bible when it says you deserve to go to hell? Yeah. Yeah, right? That's what the Bible says. And the Bible says that God made a way for us to be saved. He became a man, the man Christ Jesus, mm -hmm. lived that perfect life. He died on the cross, being innocent was buried and rose again from the dead. Do you believe that that really happened? Yeah, absolutely. And what is the one thing the Bible says we have to do to be saved? Just believe. Amen. And once you believe and put your faith in Jesus Christ, how long are you saved for? Forever. Right. And is there anything you can do to lose it? Nothing. No, yeah. right? Yeah. Now, do you see how that's different than what you said when I first got here? How you thought you had to be a good person? Absolutely. And keep the commandments, yeah. right? So according to the Bible, you have to put all your faith in Christ Jesus. But before I got here today, you said it was about how good you were, mm -hmm. right? So if you were trusting in yourself, where were you on your way before I came here? To hell. To hell, yeah. right? But the Bible says all you got to do is put your faith in Jesus Christ and you can be saved, right? So let me show you the last couple verses. Romans chapter 10. The Bible makes it very clear in verse 9. It says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So what's this verse saying? You know, we'll even throw in 13 for, for good measure. It says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So according to these verses, it's saying that first... You believe in your heart what the Bible says about salvation, right? Okay. And the Bible very clearly says that it's only by faith. And once you believe that, you confess with your mouth. Mm -hmm. This is the way I like to think of it, you know. It, you know, let's say I told you there was a guy across the street who was giving away free iPads, right? A very expensive device, right? And I said, all you got to do is go over there and ask him for one, and he'll give you one. Now, obviously, it's a, it's, an, a, it's a fantasy situation. If there was a guy giving away free iPads, we'd all be running over there yeah. to get one. But let's say somebody really was going to give you an iPad. First, you'd have to believe that claim, right. right? And then, you know, if you believed he would give it to you, but you didn't ask him for it, do you get it? No. No, right? What do you have to do? You got to go ask him for you gotta it. You got to go ask him, exactly. So the Bible's saying that if you believe that Jesus will save you, he wants you to ask him. Right now, if you ask for something and it's just given it to you, are you working for it? No. No, right? Like if I ask you for twenty dollars so I can get some gas in my car and you just give it to me and you don't expect anything in return, that's a gift. Yeah. Or you know, it's you giving it to me for free. Right. As opposed to if I said, "Hey, Russell, I'll come over and cut your grass if you pay me twenty dollars," you know, so I can get some money for gas, then I would be earning. It. Right. But if you just ask Jesus to save you, it's free. Now, if Jesus were standing here today, which the Bible says he's everywhere, and he was holding the gift of eternal life, and you asked him to save you, do you think that he would? Yeah. And how long do you think you would be saved for? Forever. And is there anything you think you could do to lose it? Nothing. No, right? The Bible makes it very clear. So what I'd like to do is if you believe this, I'd like to lead you in a brief prayer to ask Jesus to save you. Can we do that? Absolutely. All right, yeah. let's bow our head. Just repeat after me. Now, it's not the words that, you know, it's not magic words or anything. It's whether or not you really believe it in your heart. Right. Okay? okay? So let's pray real quick. Dear Jesus. Dear Jesus. I know that I am a sinner. I know that I am a sinner. And I know I deserve to go to hell. And I know I deserve to go to hell. But I believe you died on the cross. But I believe you died on the cross. Were buried and rose again. Were buried buried and rose again and I'm trusting only in you Jesus and I am trusting only in you Jesus please save me and take me to heaven when I die please save me and take me to heaven when I die and I know and I know that there's nothing I can do to lose it that there's nothing I can do to lose it in Jesus name in Jesus name amen amen now you meant that right all right yeah all right so if you meant that and the Bible is true where are you on your way I'm on my way to heaven amen right yeah. now from this day forward you know no matter how you live, even if you were to live a sinful life or live a good life, where would you go? I would go to heaven. Yeah, right. Yeah. Now let me ask you this. What if you took your own life? Do you think you'd still go to heaven? Yeah. Yeah, right. Jesus paid for all my sins. Amen, right? Yeah. Even if you committed suicide, that sin was just forgiven. Right. And I always like to ask people that one because that one's, you know, people think, well, there's no coming back for them. Well, Jesus just forgave you of all of your right. sins. Right. Amen. 
All right, well, you know, thank you very much for listening to me. Thank Please, you for uh, coming. Please come out to church, and uh, we'd love to see you get baptized and uh, help you get uh, growing in the Lord, okay? Okay, All awesome. Right. God bless. Thank you. Have a good day.